Welcome to your Research Business Daily Report, sponsored today and this week by Toluna, pioneer of social media-inspired panel communities and leading provider of new innovative survey solutions. Last week, we shared with you the New York Times' successful implementation of its paywall. Thanks to Mashable Associate Editor Lauren Indvik, today we've got the Financial Times' ultra-successful paywall story, and it's based on the data that's being delivered. Like the New York Times, the Financial Times newly depends on circulation revenues more so than traditional advertising dollars. Ads once represented 70% of its revenues. They were 52% of that number in 2008. Now they're at 39%. Financial Times CEO John Ridding says charging for Financial Times digital editorial access was originally formulated to build a revenue stream. But now it seems that data and reader insights have become even more important through the paywall. FT now deploys 30 data analysts in three departments. One essential learning has led to the paywall being newly construed as a way to bring readers in and not the traditional means of keeping non-paying readers out. More than 5 million of them, while reading up to 8 free articles per month, are providing their email, zip code, industry, job responsibility, and position level. So, FT is recognizing patterns that have led to earlier subscription decision making. Quote, we see and map the sort of articles they read and the frequency they read those articles revealed reading. And he added, people behave in predictable ways. He also admitted a lot of the process and structure that is built up over 125 years no longer is reflected in the needs of the present readers. As a result, FT has a digital first initiative underway that is moving resources to front end digital editing and publishing. That includes shifting more staff from nighttime to daytime and elimination of 25 staffers while adding 10 digital operatives. The Financial Times isn't doting on traffic numbers like page views. Instead, it is focusing on what advertisers say they care about, depth of relationship, frequency of visits, readership and return on those readers. The New York Times and the Financial Times paywall success stories may not at all be transferable for the half of U.S. newspapers that are said to now have a paywall in place. After all, not many other newspapers have the hefty home delivery and or digital readership of these two publishing powerhouses. And that may impact paywall-inspired research efforts like that of Google Consumer Surveys. We'll see. Next, we make a conscious effort not to devote much time to new products and services for a number of reasons, but there are exceptions, like CSense, one of the world's most successful companies in the big data analyst arena. Israeli-based CSense is practical for businesses of any size. Target, Merck, and Groupon really vouch for it already. So do a lot of startups. Because this big data capability doesn't seem to compromise functionality, scalability, flexibility, governance, collaboration, or ease of use. And that's the claim of CSense CEO Amit Bendoff. Groupon Director of Analytics David Gerster even gushes, quote, nothing on the market crunches big data so easily and inexpensively, end of quote. Check out more details on the CSense article provided to me at timesofisrael.com. That's your Research Business Daily Report, sponsored by Toluna, pioneer of social media-inspired panel communities and leading provider of new innovative survey solutions. Hoping you have a great research day. We'll see you all back here tomorrow.